need to clean up some of those grasses. So we had uh, some big storms. They were the tail section, I guess, of what came through Texas. So I thought some prayers with y'all because saw the devastation of that. We had some tornado watches. No warnings, but we knew we were in a little bit of trouble when uh, everything was clear and all of a sudden we had hail pouring down. I mean, it just, we watched the radar and it just kind of formed almost over top of us from nothing. So that was fun. One of the reasons we're building with ICF to have a uh, more storm resistant home. So yeah, so uh, we worked Saturday, uh, did not work Sunday or Monday. Took a break, need a break. Gotta have those uh, mental health days, you gotta do it. So uh, did that and uh, back out here today, it's just gonna be me, uh, James and Tater and Donnie, oh, well, James and Tater, but Tater's Donnie's ride. So <laughs> they've got some things they gotta take care of today. So just be me out here. I'm going uh, to do some stuff in the uh, pool. I'm going to build the steps for the pool. So that's going to be cool. That's the main thing I'm going to work on today is building those. Don't come over here and show it from this side a lot. But uh, it's getting together. I've got Thomas Finch with Finch Designs. He is going to do drawings. And he did the first rendering for us. He's going to do some drawings. And we're going to figure out things for the elevations and where we're going to need the retaining walls and how this is all going to look when it finishes up. And so the big storms came through. You can see how the grass is pushed that way and uh, that's where the water came rushing in. Still running in pretty good. Also, when uh, met Chris at the corner lot yesterday and uh, filmed a little bit, I'll show that because uh, when he about a week, about a week and a half or so, we're gonna demo all that and uh, kind of made a plan of how that'll lay out. So feel feel pretty good about that. Of course, we got up to some shenanigans like we always do. Trying to. Uh, that's my ramble for this morning, so let's get into the video. Appreciate you stopping by. Okay, so the, I'm gonna form up for the steps here. And then once I have everything drawn out and my sizes and yada, 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 I'll probably have to take that metal corner back off and cut it down. Uh, but the fast foot, so I've gotten a lot of questions about this. It's like, how does that work? You got gravel on top of it, et cetera, et cetera. So, in this case, the fast foot's only job is to keep concrete from flowing where we don't want it to flow. So it's on the back and then it lays out this way. And so when we come through here and we're pouring concrete in, it'll settle down on the fast foot and then it'll push on the back side of it like a little bag and kind of come out some. And that's it. And, uh, that keeps it from going where we don't want it to go because we don't want it to fill all this up right now. There's none over here because we I put that foam there because we needed that to be a flat wall on that side. So over here is the same way. It's got the fast foot. Now, if we were doing a footing, which is what this was actually designed for, then this side would also be folded up and stapled and it would just fill in the middle like a bag and be the footing for your foundation. In this case, we just use it instead of having to go along and try and put a bunch of plywood on the back side, which we still have to do in a couple places, but overall it works out pretty good. There you go. There will be one person's job at least on poor day that their only job is to watch for pending doom of like a blowout or whatever, because you, you, you stop the pump, stop pumping stuff in and you fix stuff if you need to, but uh, We've had plenty of time on this one, so we feel pretty good about it. And I do have some corners because we're only pouring, we're not pouring the actual shelf part. Imagine a patio. We're not pouring the top part this time. So I'm gonna set these corners in for when we do so I can tie it into the wall that way. And we've got our 
rebar cut in here that I need to tie in place. Time to just get started measuring out my steps and seeing what I'm going to need and uh, get that all marked up and then cut out the backside of it and rebar and all that fun stuff. All right, so that's the three steps roughly figured up because I will um, actually mark out where I have to cut the wood out behind it. I'm gonna write front on each of these because I've got to run them through the table saw with an angle coming up like this so that they can get in with the trowel and get that nice and smooth. I'll make a mark to where that is and either move that piece of metal up or just cut it out completely. All right, it's another day. I got help today. Got help today. Got Tater over there. Got Donnie. Got James around here somewhere. If you can count him, I guess we will. So you see, I got uh, all that cut out and ready to go back in. Cut my metal corner. Sits back in. So what you have to think about is, okay, when the concrete's done and cured, can I get all the panels off? So that's, that's the premise. These stay, talked about that before, the little metal feet, you just cut those flush with the concrete and epoxy that like you do the holes. Uh, adjusted that, I got a little, want to do a little bit more wiggle room, but it's close. And uh, I'm gonna put these in. Tater and Donna are gonna put all, bring all the foam down in a bit. I wanna make sure I had everything ready to go though. So that'll be the last thing we probably do today, depending on how some stuff goes. So what they're doing is they're tying the vertical rebars in, uh, usually in the longer walls where you've staggered your rebar, it holds it pretty good, but in these shorter walls, it's not as good. So we just wanna make sure that that's tied up. Took these and I ran them through the table saw. So they have this, is that called a chamfer? Would that, would that be correct? Anyway, I cut an angle on them so that when we're pouring concrete, you'll be able to get the trowel. I know some people call it something else, but whatever. The flat thing you work concrete with, you can get the edge of it under here so that when we pull that off the concrete, you got a nice finished step. So I'll go ahead and put these back in now. Uh, I had them in with the silver screws before, but I'll put them actually in with the three inch screws. I'm gonna put some feet on the long one that runs across this way. And then I've got to decide how I wanna brace the other ones. They usually run a couple two by fours into the floor. We pull the steps first. And as that's towards the end of the day, you take those two by fours out and uh, usually works pretty good. So I probably won't reinvent the wheel. That sounds about right. And uh, 
yeah, so our goal is to be ready for pour after today's is over. And I think we'll get pretty close. We may, uh, not sure if we'll have the rebar done. We'll see uh, in the floor. But we, last time for the lower pool, we did the foam and the rebar and all the day of the pour. So not too worried about that. Just want to make sure everything else is good. And yeah, right? Right on. That's about it. Right on. Donnie forgot his hat again. I've already given him one hat. Look, you did? <sighs> So, uh, can't do nothing. All right, let's get to it. that up and I come back put one more there and then I just need to run a two by four down the middle to brace it
All right, you ready, Donnie? I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna show you what's up. All right, so what we're doing is we're covering the whole bottom of the pool with this one layer only. So you take it, just lay it down. There you go, and then he hands you another one. I go, you know. Yeah, and just fit in as you go, and then come across. And then uh, when we get down here, we'll take the uh, sawzall and cut it as needed. It is blazing out here. I can, so I had the GoPro laying in a little bit of sunlight and barely hold the handle. That's how hot it is. All right, they don't know the meaning of 18 inches. That's like almost three feet. <laughs> that's all right, we'll cut a little bit better. So, got a few little spots to fill in. But that's the general idea. Put the foam down. You don't have to tape it like you do a basement because not worry you're not trying to do some sort of vapor barrier this is uh just for some insulation so when the water warms up it stays warmer longer so you can swim a little bit extra part of the year with all the sunlight we get i don't think we're gonna have a problem with that Whew, boy it's baking all right so uh, we'll fill a little bit of gaps in here steps are done put uh some oh Put some rebar in here, so those are ready. Got the little angle I talked about. And uh, I've gotta go get the girls, but Tater and Donnie are gonna start uh, getting rebar ready to go down in here. And uh, here we go, so yep. let's do it. Good morning, all right, so final day on the pool. We'll be 100% uh, ready to pour after today got a uh, few things to finish up i'll show you what's going on there what do you think james we're getting there you like your gift yeah got everybody little bucket hats keep cool hats because i tell you what boy the sun is about took each one of us out at different times because it has been baking hard but today we're getting a little reprieve it's a couple days of cool weather so we'll take it we're doing some reinforcement in certain areas but we're in pretty good shape there's some things i'm gonna touch up on i'm gonna put the laser up tonight once we get some darkness going on and uh make sure everything is still level and any little areas like i know these corners will stick up a little bit I'm going to make marks so I can cut everything and make sure we're good. Reinforce that whole wall because after I cut those steps out, this wall ended up being just basically one side of styrofoam. So needed some help for that. Tater and Donnie got all the uh, rebar tied up. So they're putting the rebar in the bottom. How you like the other ones? Are you even messing with them yet? Okay. So he's on that. And then we've got to do the corners. I tied up a couple corners for examples yesterday. Uh, but just a few little things left on this and I'm gonna get up and go over there and go ahead and start the Radius for the stairwell so that when James is finished over here He can just run it on up the rest of the way and uh, While he runs that up the rest of the way. I'm going to build the lentils over the doorways and uh, Bought a couple little things so I can do go ahead and set them up without the foam up there because I wanted to really show that so you can really get a good idea of what it takes um, to build those and what you're supposed to do. It's what the engineer called for. I don't know if everybody does it, but you'll see how we're doing it. Uh, so those will go up today is the plan. And then uh, I'll get back on to the radius after I'm done with that. So yeah, I'm jumping around a little bit, but this way 
Uh, one of the things you have to do when you've got people working with you is you got to keep them busy too. So that's uh, that's part of the game you got to do. So let's uh, get to it. All right, concrete's coming Monday morning at 8 a.m. So we got a couple of things we just want to double check on, but pretty much we're ready. And uh, as a bonus, if I get the time before Monday, I'm going to locate there some uh, those big round forms that you saw early on. It's been a month since I got them. Uh, they're for the piers. So there's a round pier here, here, in the middle, and then there's a square one that has to be built off the corner of the... Uh, foam there and I'm seeing that that's poking out up there I don't know why and over there it's the kind of things you gotta check anyway so uh, the guys have to dig down the circumference of that which is like 46 inches and dig down like 16 inches into this which we eh. anyway dig down 16 inches and then we got a uh, rebar we've got doing it that's stacked up they're about uh three feet one inch tall uh when said and done it's going to be set to one inch taller than the inside of there and then there's uh some anyway there's a bunch of rebars got to go in and everything that'll be the support for the outside piers so i'd like to get those done just so that can get done at the same time we don't have to mess with it when we're pouring the basement but not the end of the world. If we don't, then uh, we'll do when we do the basement. And I've got eight isolated footings to find inside and form up. So that's all things that, you know, while we got the pump truck here and concrete and everything, we can go ahead and do. Got some rebars in there. Go through, there's a couple of little adjustments I see. Little things, just wanting to make sure it's tight. See, so I got the uh, 90s tied in there. So the wall get poured, but not the patio part or the top of the shelf. Uh, so that'll be ready for when that happens. So it ties that wall in. And yeah, I mean, we're ready. Ready to get this part done and off my list. This and the basement. So within two weeks, all that'll be done probably within 10 days basement and pool should be done that way uh pool gets poured as soon as we take all the forms off and we can take all the scaffolding off there's some places i need to use these zonts and zuckles i'm gonna use them on all the round uh areas inside for extra bracing and knock that out and then the uh, floor is ready to ship uh they're waiting on me so floors coming in from super floor and we'll set that well the steel has to come in steel guys are gonna be out here monday so maybe we'll interview them if uh if uh, i get a second and then so they'll do that they'll set the steel they're just waiting on us then we'll set the floor right on top of all this and um, then i've already got all the six inch forms here to build the next floor so i can go ahead and start setting that so it's gonna look pretty cool out here um i'll have to decide my schedule and uh talk to a couple different people about how we're gonna finish the pool out and then i'd finish all this plumbing and you know endless what do you want what are they endless projects and the people that know me very well know that I like doing all this stuff because I always need a project. I always have. It's just how I'm built. It's uh, it's uh, one of those things. So I think I've got plenty of projects out here. So I don't think we'll have a shortage of stuff to do. Um, that's it. So I am heading right now to the to my mobile studio 
and uh, this is the last bit of footage I need to, um, to uh, copy off into the editor and then I'm going to jump on uh, jump on editing. A uh, couple changes in the last uh, this will be the third video I think. I'm editing now with CapCut. I was using Mavabi for years but I changed to CapCut um, and so you know experiment with some things. It's kind of cool. It's definitely faster. It's got lots more uh, a bunch more features so it's pretty cool um, still playing around with the color on it and uh, how all that stuff works because I like to mess around with it and experiment and uh, it's weird because I can the compute the GoPro settings are the same and I can drag in and it looks completely different I understand some difference because you know it's difference in uh, you know how much uh lights outside and stuff like that but i mean totally different so it's kind of weird but yeah so inside the mobile office see got my editing screens and everything set up so got a futon if i need to sleep <laughs> and uh yeah so this works out pretty good for what i use it for and uh see you in the next one Working to get back, back on the right track, getting all my ducks in a row. Changing the seasons, picking up the pieces, don't need a reason to get back home. I got turned around, went crazy just because, right there for a moment, I forgot who I was. I'm on my way, but I'm not there I can feel it in the air There's better days ahead My heart's beating in my chest All the lessons that I've learned On the bridges that i burned Now I'm cleaning up my mess I'm a work in progress I'm a work in progress I've got regrets, stupid things I've said, never meant to hurt you, I'm sorry my friend, I'm writing my wrongs, the list got so long, day by day I'm just making my amends, I got turned around, went crazy just because, right there for a moment, I forgot who I was. I'm on my way, but I'm not there I can feel it in the air There's better days ahead My heart's beating in my chest All the lessons that I've learned On the bridges that i burned Now I'm cleaning up my mess I'm a work in progress